G'day everybody, it's James here from Dark Arts Lockpicking. Hope you're all doing well. Pick some locks, doing some hacking, but as always, remembering to keep it bloody legal. So I've got a new product that I've been playing with over the last few days. I've been testing it out, something shocking. And from the thumbnail, you will know, of course, I am talking about the Southwood E500 XT. This is an electric pick gun. Now, is this a tool for everybody? No. I want to make that clear. It's not really, you know, it's not a tool for everybody. It's great for locksmiths, uh, for pen testers, like non-destructive entry personnel. But for your average Joe Blow that's into lock picking, well, it's not really a tool for you, unless you want to have a play around with it. But I can tell you now, it is a lot of fun. When she works, she will work fast, she will work well. But yeah, it's more of a locksmith's product rather than a locksporter's product. I got this just as another piece to add to my kit for pen tests and for non-destructive entry. Uh, for residential lockouts. So it's always good to have a few different options in your bag of tricks. I ordered this one from Locksmith's Toolbox. I bought it off there. Because uh, they are actually, from what I heard, have been told... Looks like they're going to be shutting down the business. So they're having a sale on. And I purchased this thing for cheap. When I say cheap, it was over $200. It was like $218 or something like that. Uh, 200 and something dollars. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. But I got it for $128. So I saved about 80, 90 bucks, something, something along the lines of that. Um, and it was, I think it was the last one he had in stock, I'm not sure. But I ordered it anyway. So what do you get? You get this nice little leather case. It is actually quite a nice case to hold everything, keep everything in and protect it. You have a little zipper pouch on the front here, which holds some tension wrenches and your pick needles and a Allen key to... Put your needle in and out. Install the needle and take it out. Which is all kept in this nice little front zipper just here. The stitching quality is really good. The tools you get, the tensioners and stuff. So you get a few different picking needles. Which are your standard run of the mill pick tips. Uh, that you would see on, you know, like the LAT-17 by Southord automatic snap gun stuff like that you can see this one's got a bit of wear because I've been using it quite a bit and it's still working fantastic so you get four needles or tips you get a couple of tensioners I'm going to keep that one out you get a long one with a twist all bottom of the keyway and it's about a medium you get a short one with a twist you get a straight rigid and a narrowed down. So that's more like a small, medium and large sized bottom of the keyway tensioners. You get the Allen key that you need to install and remove the pick needles. Because it will not fit in the bag here with the pick needle attached. So we'll open this up and we can have a look. So I've got some C batteries in here, it takes like C size, these are just some alkalines that I bought because it runs off three C batteries the instructions which just tells you about the batteries you can use where safety glasses when using, blah 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 instructions, unscrew the body and insert three C alkaline or you know batteries in there tells you kind of how to use it you also get the rebuild card and this is my invoice that I've purchased so paid off camera so $117 plus 10% tax so all up $128.70 uh, saved quite a bit of money on this in here I do have and it's not actually a south or one but I do have a tension wheel I find this works really 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 well with the electric pick gun because um, you can really uh, 
pulsate that tension quickly, like on and off, on and off, on and off. Very, very light tension you can use with this wheel when it comes to picking. So, you know, you can just add a little bit of tension. It's enough usually. Once the lock's picked, the pick picks it. This will allow that core to turn just enough so that you can actually open the lock. Uh, and I find this works a little bit better than the bottom of the keyway tensioners. That's just my personal preference on it. But because it's not a south of one, I'm not going to actually show that off in the camera. And this is the pick just here. Very space age looking, almost adult product looking. <laughs> um, which somebody thought it was when I first grabbed it out. But this is the pick just here. It's actually quite light. It's made from aluminum. You have nice textured center just here. So you can get positive grip on your pick gun. You have the area just here where you actually connect your needle in with a little screw. It takes the Allen wrench. That's not going to come out anytime soon. I've been using this quite a bit and it's still... No, it doesn't come loose or anything. We have the plastic knob on the top just here, which is for adjusting the throw, how far that needle actually moves. We have, of course, Southall branding etched into the side of the unit just here with USA, and a button underneath here, which is what you press to power on the machine. Now, to put everything together, you unscrew the two halves. Now, once the actual batteries are in it, that's what gives us the most amount of weight. This is quite light, quite hollow, because it's hollow. All the business end is right in here. The motor that powers everything is in this little piece just here. So I'm going to throw my batteries in. You put three batteries in, and now we have our weight. And then you just screw the two halves together. Now, I would have liked to have seen a little O-ring on the inside of here. Just as a little cushion barrier. But it's not needed. And if you really wanted one, you could probably add one yourself. I mean, you don't want to get this wet because it's got vents in it. So you don't want water to get in here anyway. And we tighten it up. It actually weighs a little bit now. It's not overly heavy, but it weighs a bit. I'm going to move this case out so every time you use this if you take your batteries out don't want them exploding in there but you can fit the pick in there the pick gun but with a needle attached you can't fit it into the bag so every time you use it you have to take the needle off and put the needle on it does get a little bit tedious but if, I mean if you're going to do a few lockouts or in a day you might just leave it in there for the whole day the needle in just have it in the bag so, I'm just going to undo that screw a little bit and I'm going to slide my pick tip in. You don't need to unscrew it a whole lot, don't need to take it right out, just enough so you can push that metal aside, slide the pick tip in, then tighten it down. Now, you don't need to crank down super, super tight on it because you will booger it. But just tight enough like that, that ain't going to go anywhere. I've been using it quite a bit, I've been putting it through its paces, and I'm yet to have the pick tip go flying anywhere or get lost. So, that is enough to hold it. Now, it is quite loud. If you've got heavens in, just be warned, it is quite loud. Only downside to this, it's not very covert entry because it's extremely loud when it's in use. But, I find, playing around with it, that halfway, the screw halfway, is enough play in the actual pick. Enough, enough to pick locks open anyway. So, this, think of it like a snap gun. A snap gun is, a, is exactly the same principle. Except one click and it snaps the pins, hits against the pins. This is like a snap gun but on steroids. Much like adding a bump ring to a bump key so instead of having one hit at a time like a single snap gun would with a bump key you add a little rubber ring onto it and then you can rapidly hit those pin that key 
causing those pins to bounce and hopefully separating it. The shear arm, that's what this is. This is just like putting a ring on a bump key. It is a kinetic attack. You want this picking needle to slam into those key pins, hopefully causing them to separate at the shear line, thus allowing you to open the lock. Now, it does have a couple of downsides. It's not the be all end all pick. It will not open absolutely every single lock. It does take some practice to get used to it. You do need a semi well open keyway. Something that's very, very paracentric and very tight, like a lot of really restricted profiles. This pick gun isn't going to work because you need enough room for that needle to actually move. So, you know, it's not going to work on very paracentric keyways. But wide open keyways, like on a lot of residential houses, this thing will work quite well. If it hits against the edge or you're putting too much tension on or it is getting jammed, it will not work. So you can actually burn out the motor if you're not careful. If you've got that jammed right in there and it's pushing up against something hard, you can hear it wants to click over, but it's not. So it needs that movement. It needs room to work. So there's a couple of downsides to it. But for residential lockouts, like most residential locks you will come across, especially here in Australia, LW or Greensboro, or I should say Lockwood or Greensboro, LW keyways, C4 keyways, or the T2 keyway, this pick will work quite well. Because we have a nice wide open keyway to work with. And to show you how well this kind of works, I'm not going to use tubal tension like I would like to. I'm just going to grab a tension wrench from here and use bottom of the keyway because we want that picking needle to take up the top of that lock. Now, you don't have to go jamming it all the way into the lock so it's right up against here. Your pins don't go all the way to the back of the lock. You only want, I normally go to about my finger from the end of the needle here where it connects to the swing arm. I go about a finger, that's usually to the end of the key pins. You don't want to go right in because if you're going up against the end there, you're going to be hitting up against the tail piece of the lock. It ain't going to work. You want very light tension, I have found. And you want to keep it nice and level. You can angle it if you've got quite eccentric bidding. You can move it up and down if it's... But for most of them, we're just going to go straight. And allow that pick needle to do its work. And get an open like that. When it wants to work, she works fast. We'll try it on this bottom lock as well. This is an old lock that's been around and used and abused. And we'll see if we can get it to work. Nice wide open keyway. The other thing is you're not going to be cranking down. And also help if I lock the door. Um, you're not going to be cranking down on that tensioner. And you're not going to be sticking it in and holding it there for five minutes running. It's only quick little bursts. And you want to fluctuate on that tension wrench. Just like that. And I have actually done it the wrong way to unlock the lock. Got to turn it the other way. But you can see. There we go. Actually it was the right way. It's just getting caught. That we have now unlocked both locks. So when this wants to work, it will work fast. It will work very fast. But as I said, it's not the be-all end-all tool and it is quite loud. Little couple of tips, you can throw a bit of lubricant in the lock if the lock is older, full of gunk and grime. You can throw a little bit of lube in there. It will help increase your chances. If you're going to use it against locks such as an American lock with very, very strong springs on their cores, it ain't going to work that well because you need quite light tension for these to work and you need to be able to overcome that spring tension on the core. Security pins, again, not saying that they can't be defeated by this. They can. You can pick locks with security pins, but they will reduce the successful rate of this. So it's not the be-all, end-all, but it is a great little tool to have 
in your bag of tricks because it's always a good thing to have more than one option at your availability. So there we go, the Southord USA electric pick gun. I like it. It works very, very well for what I use it for. It's going to be a part of my training kit as well, but for residential lockouts, this is going to be another little tool to add to my arsenal of tricks for gaining entrance. So I'm just going to take that needle back out, tie it all back up. Like that. Taking the batteries out. So as you can see, it don't take a whole lot to put it together. It don't take a whole lot to take it apart. It's actually quite fast. Take my batteries out. Now I've been using this quite a lot and I've opened up a hell of a lot of locks with this. And these batteries are still holding up well. They are yet to go dead, and I've opened and used this over the last few days quite a lot. As I said, you're only doing short little bursts of power. You're not going to be cranking down on that power button and holding it in there for five minutes trying to get it to go. If you have quite extreme bidding, angling the pick in there can work. But, you know, for me, i found that just holding it in a nice straight angle, sometimes I have had to remove it slightly to try and get that tip where the most flexibility will be the most most wiggle room to get that tip to bounce across the pins for some more extreme bidding but when she works she will work fast and it's a great little tool to have in your little bag of tricks now will it damage the lock it can do if you overuse it in a lock i've actually seen a bit of brass come flying out of locks some powder come flying out of locks because it is adding quite a bit of force, just like a bump key to the pins. So it does not have its, you know, it's not like it's not going to damage the lock if you aren't careful. Like any piece of lock manipulation device, you do have still run a risk of damaging a lock. So don't go using it on ones that are in use unless you're actually a locksmith. Or your non-destructive entry specialist like myself that gains an entrance into buildings. But anyway, the Southord E500XT. If you have any questions, put them in the description down below. Hopefully I'll be able to try and get some more videos done using this on some different locks. Maybe out in the field and stuff like that. But if you like what you see, check out all the links in the description down below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to make sure you stay up to date. And as always, till next time, cheers guys.